Is that you? Did you eat lunch? I had that shrimp cocktail in the fridge. Was it yours? I hope not. I couldn't remember, so I ate it. Maybe we should write our names on our food items from now on. What do you think? What's with you? My back. Hey, Charles, you'll be glad. I have a plan to get me out of your house pronto. A job is a plan. Is your plan a job? Drum roll, please. I'm going to be a screenwriter, like you. OK, I know you think this is just one of my get rich quick schemes, but I'm doing it right this time. I'm taking a three-day seminar. And it's only 500 bucks. Screenwriting seminars are bullshit. In theory, I agree with you, but this one's different. This one's highly regarded in the industry. No, no, don't say industry. I'm sorry, I forgot. Charles, this guy knows screenwriting. People come from all over to study with him. I'll pay you back, buddy, just as soon Let as me I explain something to you. Okay. Anybody who says he's got the answer is going to attract desperate people, be it in the world of religion. I just, I just need to lie down while you explain this to me. Sorry, I apologize. Okay, go ahead. So, Sorry. So, okay, go. There are no rules, Donald. And anybody who says there are oh, is, let, is let, just, let, you know... Not rules. Principles. McKee writes that a rule says you must do it this way. A principle says this works and has through all remembered time. The script I'm starting, it's about flowers. Oh. Nobody's ever done a movie about flowers before. So, so there are no guidelines. What about flowers for Algernon? Well, th that's not about flowers. Oh, okay. And it's okay. not a movie. I'm sorry, I never saw it. Okay, keep going. Look, my point is that those teachers are dangerous if your goal is to try to do something new. And a writer should always have that goal. Writing is a journey into the unknown. It's not building, you know, one of your model airplanes. The key is a former Fulbright scholar, Charles. Are you a former Fulbright scholar? What? You want to hear my pitch? Go away, goddammit. You know, I'm just trying to do something. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. Cool. OK, there's a serial killer, right? Well, no, wait. And he's being hunted by a cop. And he's taunting the cop, right? Sending clues who his next victim is. He's already holding her hostage in his creepy basement. So the cop gets obsessed with figuring out her identity and in the process falls in love with her. Even though he's never even met her. She becomes like, like, like the unattainable, like, like the holy grail. It's a little obvious, don't you think? Okay, but here's the twist. We find out that, that the killer really suffers from multiple personality disorder, right? See, he's, he's actually really the cop and the girl. All of them are him. Isn't that fucked up? The only idea more overused than serial killers is multiple personality. On top of that, you explore the notion that cop and criminal are really two aspects of the same person. See every cop movie ever made for other examples of this. Mom called it psychologically taught. The other thing is, there's no way to write this. Did you consider that? I mean, how, how could you have somebody held prisoner in a basement and, and working in a police station at the same time. Trick photography. Okay, that's not what I'm asking. Listen closely. What I'm asking is, in the reality of this movie, where there's only one character, right? Okay? How could you... What, what exactly would... I agree with Mom. Very taut. Sybil meets, I don't know. Dress to Kill. Cool. I really like Dress to Kill. Until the third act denouement. That's not how it's pronounced. I meant to ask you, I need a cool way to kill people. <laughs> don't worry for my script. I don't write that kind of stuff. Oh, come on, man, please. You're the genius. Here you go. The killer's a literature professor. He cuts off little chunks from his victims' bodies until they die. He calls himself the deconstructionist. That's kind of good. I like that. See, I was kidding, Donald. Oh, OK. Sorry. You got me. <laughs> Do you mind if I use it, though?
he just comes up with all these great jokes and everybody laughs. <laughs> but he's serious too, Charles. You'd love him. He's all for originality, just like you. But he says we have to realize that we, we all write in a genre. And we must find our originality within that genre. See, it turns out there hasn't been a new genre since Fellini invented the mockumentary. My genre's thriller. What's yours? You and I share the same DNA. Is there anything more lovely than that? What'd you say, bro? Morning. Hey, you two. Up early for a change. You seem chipper. I'm good. I have some new ideas. Oh, God, you guys are so smart. It's like a brain factory in here. I got some ideas, too, this morning. She got really, really good ones. You know, in a Donald sort of way. I'm putting it, hey, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm putting in a chase sequence. Uh, so the killer flees on horseback with the girl, the cops after them on a, on a motorcycle. And it's like a battle between motors and horses, like technology versus horse. And there's still all one person, right? Well, that's a big payoff. It sounds exciting. Thanks, man. Thanks. See, I told you he was gonna <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I love being your muse. I finished my script. I'm done. So would you show it to your agent? It's called The Three. Thanks. I also want to thank you for your idea. It was very helpful. I changed it a little. Now the killer cuts off body pieces and, and makes his victims eat them. It's kind of like... Caroline has this great tattoo of a snake swallowing its own tail, and... Ouroboros. I don't know what that means. The snake, it's called Ouroboros. I don't think so. But anyway, it's cool for my killer to have this modus operandi, because at the end, when he forces the woman who's really him to eat herself, he's also eating himself to death. I'm insane. I'm Ouroboros. I don't know what that word means. I've written myself into my screenplay. That's kind of weird, huh? It's self-indulgent. It's narcissistic, it's solipsistic, it's pathetic. I'm pathetic, I'm fat and pathetic. I'm sure you had good reasons, Charles. You're an artist. The reason is because I'm too timid to speak to the woman who wrote the book. Because I'm pathetic. Because I have no idea how to write. Because I can't make flowers fascinating. Because I suck. You're gonna find this. I don't think so. I don't wanna die, Donald. I've wasted my life. God, I've wasted it. You did not. And you're not gonna die. I wasted it. I admire you, Donald, you know? I spent my whole life paralyzed, worrying about what people think of me. And you, you're just oblivious. I'm not oblivious. No, you don't understand. I mean that as a compliment. It was this time in high school. I was watching you at the library window. You were talking to Sarah Marsh. Oh, God, I was so in love with her. I know. And, and you were flirting with her. And she was being really sweet to you. I remember that. And then, when you walked away, she started making fun of you with Kim Kennedy. And it was like they were, they were laughing at me. You didn't know it all? You seemed so happy. I knew. I heard them. Well, how come you were so happy? I love Sarah Charles. It was mine. That love. I owned it. I mean, Sarah didn't have the right to take it away. I can love whoever I want. But she thought you were pathetic. <laughs> that was her business, not mine. You are what you love, not what loves you. That's what I decided a long time ago. I 
I got shot. Isn't that fucked up? Shut up. Stop laughing. Okay, it's gonna be okay, Donald. Just don't go to sleep. Just don't go to sleep, Donald. Look at me. Look at me, Donald. Keep looking at me. Open your eyes. Donald, please open your eyes. Donald, Donald please, please, please open your eyes. Donald, Donald, open your eyes. Imagine me and you. I do, I think about you day and night. It's only right to think about the one you love and hold you tight, so happy together. Look at me, imagine me and you, I do, and I 